Well, the first reported case of coronavirus in New York State was diagnosed right here in the city, and this news is leaving many New Yorkers with a lot of questions about the virus and what is being done to prevent its spread. So joining us with all of the answers, we have Dr. David Perlin. Thank you so much. You Pleasure. are the chief scientific officer of for the Center of Discovery and Innovation at Hackensack Meridian School of Medicine. So we've got lots to get through. Great. Let's uh, we'll start with some of the specifics because mm -hmm. your lab in New Jersey is developing this test for patients uh, suspected mm -hmm. of having the coronavirus. So maybe you can take us through how so, this works. Sure, Nanda. So we developed a test that test that looks at the specific components of the uh, of the COVID nineteen. Uh, 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 RNA. This is the nucleic acid that comprises the virus. So it's a very specific test. It's identical. Has the identical components to what uh, the CDC test has, and it's been used in the various uh, state uh, laboratories, and now it's CDC. But it goes a little further and has other components that are being used in Europe and other places. Now we are seeing some visuals here, and this is the CDC test that I believe we have some file video of. So this isn't exactly your test. So they're very similar, but yours tests people that don't have it, you can find out if you do not have it. So our, our test is very specific. It'll, it'll, it'll uh, identify who's positive and who's negative. And, and often understanding who's negative is just as important, if not more important, than, than who's positive. Right, then someone might right. not have to yeah. self-quarantine themselves for that's, the full that's two correct. weeks. Yes, yes, and we'll get more into that. But just still talking about this test. So it's ready to go, but there is one more factor in place so, so you can... So out. now with the new FDA guidance, uh, essentially the, uh, the test that we've developed and validated internally uh, is in fact ready to go. Uh, we would prefer to test live virus, and that's why we were requesting um, to have access to live virus. That to us, that's the gold standard. You want to detect what, you know, what the infectious agent is uh, that you're worried about. Okay, so people have a lot of questions about this virus. I guess the first one is just, why is this spreading so quickly? So, uh, so coronaviruses infect the lungs. They replicate. Uh, you get a lot of virus particles. Uh, then when you, they, they can then come out in exhaled particles, uh, small droplets. Uh, they're live viruses, so it'll spread. It won't spread for long distances, but far enough so that you can get person-to-person -person transmission, and the virus can stay live, for example, on surfaces for some period of time. It's not exactly clear how long. And there's been a lot of comparison between coronavirus and the flu. Is the coronavirus, is this more, more dangerous? And if so, what makes it so? Um, it, it's highly transmissible like the flu. It has some different characteristics in terms of who, you know, of the type of individual it infects. It doesn't seem to infect, for example, uh, uh, children as readily as, as the flu, but it, it certainly is highly transmissible. It, uh, it causes uh, respiratory distress, somewhat like the flu, but um, probably a little more severe uh, uh, across the board. And it's that easy transmissibility that has people asking, should I go on a trip right now? I know for yourself, you had a plan to yes. go to Switzerland. This was for a meeting of respiratory infectious diseases, but you actually had to cancel those plans. I, I canceled my plans, not because I was concerned about being, being infected. Uh, I was concerned. Uh, I, I, was con I was concerned about getting quarantined uh, uh, because I had to travel from Italy uh, into Switzerland, um, and it was sort of a fluid situation there. So for yes. someone like you, it's important that you're working on these tests, so you needed those, those I needed two to, weeks. I needed yes. to be here, yes. So should people think twice? I know I had a trip booked in two weeks, and I'm just wondering, you know, it was an international trip. Uh, should you go? Should you travel domestically instead? What are your thoughts? I think um, there are there are parts of the world which have restrictions, uh, which uh, uh, the CDC has has indicated. I think uh, it's pretty clear. I think there are other parts of the world which are perfectly fine. Certainly, parts you know most most of travel in the U.S. is uh, is absolutely fine. We have some clusters of cases uh, in uh, in in Washington State, uh, but but fundamentally, I think people can travel. Uh, but they should be prudent. It's uh, you think of it like a very serious flu for which you're you're not vaccinated. Okay. Well, great advice. Thank you so much. And I guess uh, don't buy masks. That's the advice that we're getting. But keep washing all of the services. Don't buy ma don't buy masks. Most people, uh, even if you had a mask, uh, most people don't know how to use it. You see people. Uh, uh, wearing masks who have beards where uh, they don't have um, proper protection, not really useful, not recommended. Wash, use proper hygiene, uh, and, and take care of yourself. Uh, a healthy immune system is your best defense. Well, thank you so much for joining us and clearing up some of our questions.